Hey class, this is Nick. Uh, I got a tutorial for you today about using Adobe InDesign to uh, create uh, a portfolio document. And InDesign is a is a special program uh, that we use. Uh, it's 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 useful because uh, it can help automate some tasks uh, for a multiple page document that will make it easier for you to uh, make changes later, to um, to edit your design, and just generally work faster than if you were using uh, a program like Adobe Illustrator, for example, um, to lay out you know each page individually. Um, so. Uh, it's important to to use InDesign uh, and to use it effectively um, because it's just going to save you a lot of time and like a lot of hassle, and it'll end up making your your pages look a lot better. Um, but before uh, really get into InDesign, uh, I just want to talk about your layout. Um, and 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 I'm actually laying this out right now in Adobe Illustrator because. Um, I'm assuming you don't know anything about InDesign, and I don't, I don't want to get into that interface uh, uh, right now to talk about how you design your layout. Uh, I know that we know how to use Illustrator, and uh, those tools are familiar to us. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with this. And and the idea here is is just to to kind of work through um, an example layout in Illustrator that we're then going to translate to um, InDesign. Okay, so um, and and when you would when you would do this process yourself, you would not necessarily start in Illustrator like in the future. Um, once you know InDesign, you, you could go ahead and do that. Um, this is just something that I'm doing uh, for this particular for this particular um, example. Um, again, just because it's it's something that you're that you're more familiar with. Um, in 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 this Illustrator file that I have are um, a few elements. I have uh, the title, so this would be like the title of your particular project that you're trying to show. Um, you can see that I've, I've got a certain like text size uh, and I've kind of listed the points. This is just the way that I'm um, illustrating this for you. You don't necessarily have to design yours this way. Um, so I've got, I've got different kinds of text uh, and, and I've got a, this dark gray boxes represent like the text area. And it's just a way for me to see, like, if I'm looking at this, if I'm zooming out, if I'm looking at it, like, what is kind of the general? Let me turn off guides here. Um, what does it What does it look like? Like, if I kind of squint at it, like, what's the layout? Okay. Um, so these dark areas represent where text would go, and generally, like, the size of that text. And this lighter area represents what we call an image placeholder. So it's a it's a place where an image might go. This is one. Uh, one kind of layout. It doesn't mean all my pages look exactly like this, but I use this idea to generate the guides that I'll use to help me figure out my layout um, across multiple pages. This is a standard 8.5 by 11 uh, piece of paper, uh, and I really designed this layout around the incorporation of a 11 by 17 uh, scaled element. So a lot of our, uh, our our output for our project started off as 11 by 17 images. Um, but we're going to be putting those into an eight and a half by eleven. So I made an eleven by seventeen box, and then I scaled it to fit my eight and a half by eleven uh, proportionally. Okay, and uh, so that that means I, I won't have to distort any images that I put in. Um, means the proportions can be can be preserved, uh, and and so that that's how I really designed this. And this is an example of a layout where I have a very large image that I want to show to the audience. Uh, and I don't want to cut it up into small pieces. I, I want to. I want it to have an image on the page that has some descriptive text. It has enough room for a caption, and enough room for a for a footer. Um, and if I turn my guides back on, you can see what the logic of this is. A lot of times when you're doing layouts, you want you want to have consistency. It doesn't mean that every page is, looks exactly the same, but it means that they follow a similar logic, that they have a similar kind of balance to it, um, and that's what makes them clear, and that's what tends to make them um, aesthetically pleasing. And so I took I took this um, this this image size, and I tried to find you know enough of space between the the uh, the uh, title text. And the uh, footer, and that kind of gave me like a dimension, you know, for this for this edge. And um, I have a what's about a four tenths of an inch or 0.4 inch uh, margin around the outer edge. 
And it's important, you know, most of the time to not let your images go all the way to the edge, especially when you're going to print something, um, just because it just, some printers won't print all the way to the edge. Um, you want to give things like proper white space. So I, I made this margin. And uh, um, the way you make a guide is to turn on rulers. So you make sure that your rulers are not hidden. Okay, so I go to rulers, show rulers, and then click and drag a guide. So you just, just, just drag from the edge, and that'll make a vertical guide. Okay, and, and um, the guides will show up in the color of the layer uh, that they're on. I tend to make a layer for all my guides. Once you have a uh, guide, you can, you can click on it, and then you can actually move it by changing the X coordinate or the Y coordinate. So in this case, if I wanted a, a guide at one inch, I could just type in one, and that puts a guide exactly, exactly where I want it. Right, um, and we want to be using the type ins. We want to do things with uh, with as much precision as possible, um, and we want to we want to look at things in even increments. So if I did a, a margin at one inch here, I might might have a duplicate margin here at the other edge uh, at ten inches, right? So I type in ten, so eleven minus one, okay. And that's how I laid these. That's how I laid these guides out to make a a, a horizontal guide. You just you just can actually take and drag from the top that will produce a horizontal guide okay um, the idea of it is is that so I started off with my margin and then I did actually end up with a guide that was um, an inch from the top and I set my my text on that actually set it so that like the descender of the letter you know hits that text um, and then I and then I gave myself an additional this one's a little bit off. It's like 5.5 inches. If you're if you're off by like a thousandth or a hundredth, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so I had I had my I gave myself about an inch of space. Like if I have yeah, if this is uh, one inch and well about 1.75. Uh, so about so about 0.75 inches from that uh, space, and I put my image in there. Um, I gave myself another let's say eighth of an inch of space and then I put my caption text in here. So I made sure that there is enough space between the the margin and the title and then the title and the object and then the object and the caption. I created about a quarter of an inch uh, well no sorry about a 0.4 inch um, space here to mirror the margin here you don't have to give it quite so much space you, you could probably do like an eighth of an inch of space such as what we saw you know here um but i decided to do it anyway so then then, and then i made that my uh my uh, text area here so there's there's a there's a bit of balance to the image like you can see there's there's a column here and a column here and a column there and they all have the same uh width um and then i put in my my footer at the inside of that of that margin um, with with enough space for, for a 10 point font um, and that's and that was kind of the logic of it so, and, and then once I did that so that that was what I call my my like big image layout right um, and and then I use that principle to kind of define the other the other layout which I call my my small image layout so this is like if I have an 11 by 17 image but I don't want to take up the entire you know width of the uh, of the uh, page I have this layout that I can start to organize. Um, you, you typically won't have one layout that works for everything. What you want is a system that has an order that makes it so that your portfolio has consistency. Okay. Before we move on, though, I want to talk about what the what what these um, what these types of text you know are. I think title is pretty self-explanatory. Like the way that we're going to use it is to basically define you know what the name of the project is. But we don't have one on every page, right? Well, we'll probably just have one on the first page where we introduce each of the projects. Um, and it's bold, and I made it, uh, It's right now it's Helvetica 36, 36 point, right? And hierarchically, right, it's big, it's bold, um, it's a certain proportion, uh, and, it, and, it, and it's on the upper left-hand corner to like, catch the eye. The second text is what we call body text, and this is the text that'll be the description. It's a large amount of text. Uh, I made it 10 point. I wouldn't make it any smaller than 10 point, 10 points or nine points, because um, it just isn't going to read very well, especially if you if you did print this. Um, these are digital portfolios, but we don't want to make it like fine print. Right? We want to have enough white space and enough um, 
uh, just enough uh, size, enough scale, so that it's legible. Um, <clears throat> this is just a 10 point, and then uh, if I go to character, I gave it about a 12 point spacing, so it's about a 20% uh, line space between each line. The more space between each line, the more kind of visual room you have to read it. It just makes it nicer. It's kind of like double spacing when you're when you're doing a word document, although it's not double spaced, right? It's it's like 120 percent uh, space. Um, so body text. When we say body, that's what we mean. And then caption text should be self-explanatory. It's the it's the image caption. Um, all of your images, uh, well, for the most part, should be captioned. You should say what the image is, especially if it's a zoom in of an image or if it's a process image. You should make it make it clear what that image is supposed to be saying. If you have a partner, you want to credit, you know, the fact that you worked with a partner on it. So you can say, um, you know, um, this is an image of, you know, like my materials and my project. And then you could put both of your last names, or you could say image by you know Bob and David or something like that. But um, anyway, just so that you credit the person you worked with, um, it's important to always give credit you know for things so that it's not understood that this is just your work. Um, if you used a photograph that someone else took on a project, you would always want to give uh, credit for that, and that's a good habit to get into. The footer represents information about your portfolio that shows up on on. On, on every page except for probably your title page. Um, it would be something like uh, your, your first name and your last name and an Arch 230 portfolio. Um, this is also where the page numbers would go. So a footer is just information that is on every page. Um, it tells us if, for example, someone separated a page from your document, it would uh, help a person understand where that, it, where that page came from. Uh, if you did print it, it would help you keep the pages in order. Um, it's just very useful to have a footer uh, on every page. And so these aren't exactly what the fonts are or exactly what the color of them are or anything like that. These are just representing, um, again, the kind of visual you know, space that they occupy. Okay. Um, so, that, so that's it. So then if I go, so that was my big image layout. I have what I call my small image layout. And my small image layout might not have the title, so I might turn that off. And if I look at it, Turn off my guides here. You know, it might look something like this. Okay, I have a lot of. This might be a big descriptive text and uh, a couple of big images. And again, doesn't mean that all the pages look like this. But this is just the. Uh, if I have, if I wanted to go from this two column layout to this two column layout, it gives me. Uh, it gives me the ability to uh, do that. Um, you want to make sure that if, after you've hidden guides, you want to make sure that you are not. Make that your guides are not locked. If they're locked, you can't move them, uh, and you can't change the numbers of them. Uh, now, when you're done, you might want to lock them, but you don't want to lock them right now. So again, we went back to, if we look at this layout, I started off and I made this column with the image, and then a space, and then this, this column with the text. That's the idea here. So I took, I took that, and I created this space as a column. And then I went ahead and I drew a line down the center of the page, and I gave it uh, an, an offset. It's not quite, it's not quite uh, 0.4 inches. Probably should be, um, but that kind of messed up some other things. So I, I went with this layout. It's pretty close though. Um, so that gave me this like center. So I did, I did a line, and then I and then I offset it by like maybe 1.75. Should be. Um, or sorry, um, maybe uh, 0.15 instead of 0.2, but it's pretty close. So I, I offset it by half in each direction, and then I um, I took my my image that was 11 by 17, and I rescaled it for this, and then I used that to generate these lines, which are separated at a midpoint. And these are it's again it's it's approximately this same spacing and then I went ahead and then I uh, laid out another one based on that and then I looked at this text here and so you could do a full full set of text here and then captions that only go to here remember you don't have to fill the entire space you could also look at a layout that might do something like it might do something like this again this gives us a lot of a lot of flexibility it could be another thing too where you could uh, can move this over. You 
know, snapping these things as I go here with my smart guides. Um, and then there could be there could be an image or two. Again, if I'm preserving this, I'm holding down Shift to scale it. And that actually gives you, because it's proportional, it gives you the room for two images. I could make that four. Okay. So these are... So again, that, having the guides gives me the flexibility to create different layouts as I need them. Okay. So that's that's the principle. That's what you want to be designing a layout. Now this is a very conservative layout. It's it's a very rigorous, very straightforward grid. You could do some more exciting things with like bleeds or uh, images that are that are like a little bit offset from each other. But this just establishes a consistency, uh, and that's something that I that I that I like in the portfolios that I that I work on. Um, and so this is just generally um, generally the, the idea that we're that we're following. Okay, so once you have that figured out, you're ready. You're ready to go on to InDesign to begin to implement it. But I, I would, I would work on this, you know, back and forth, a couple different iterations. Talk to your TAs, talk to your peers, get some feedback on your layout design. Um, you know, you can add other graphical elements too. Like if I wanted to put a line across here, you know, maybe that's something that I wanted that I that I'd want to do, um, or I wanted to add some color, or something like that. Those are all things that you can do. Uh, I'm just going to add, so like if I just made a bigger, let's see here, go to my stroke here. You know, I could I could definitely just do like an element that's like a line. Okay, fine, right? Um, don't be afraid too, when you do your portfolios, to have a uh, page that is really like a full image, right? Again, if I'm using my proportions, and I might need to do, yeah. I'm kind of eyeballing this and I shouldn't. But again, if I'm keeping my, keeping the gaps that I had so that, you know, you just have a full image as large as you can, still preserving the margins and preserving the footer and preserving that distance between the caption and the image. If you make these images, they're very high quality, have a lot of detail in them. You don't always want to reduce them, okay? So so don't be afraid to have, you know, a few images that are just full bleed, that just have a whole whole image on one page, and then to follow it up on a second page with process or more description. Okay. Okay. So that's the end of this first part. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and take a break, and then we'll go into starting to lay this out in uh, InDesign.